crows and ravens? Are they birds of ill omen, clever tricksters, or messengers from the spirit world, or maybe all of the above and more? If you are finding yourself drawn to crows or ravens, or maybe you're somehow like afraid of them, or maybe they've been showing up in your life lately. If this is true, then stay tuned because we're going to take a deep dive today into the symbolism of crow and raven and what they mean spiritually so you can figure out what their message is for you. So ravens and crows are similar birds and that they, they belong to the corvid family. It's a family of birds that includes magpies, rooks, and jays as well. And the ravens and crows are the biggest group of the corvidae and they belong to a single genus known as corvus. So ravens and crows are very, very closely related. And in fact, there's not really, we go species by species, whether it's a raven or a crow. There's, there's not a lot of distinction. I'll go a little bit into the difference in a bit. Uh, there are about 45 species of ravens and crows worldwide. They're found in North America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Africa. And some, some are found in, in various islands in various places in the world. I'm going to, for this video, just refer here, we're going to be working with two specific species that I'm familiar with. These are the common raven, which is found throughout the northern hemisphere, and the American crow. And uh, the American crow is found in North America, um, Canada, down through Mexico. And there are similar species in Europe, I think probably in Asia as well. I know in Europe they've got the carrion crow and the rook, which are, are similar. Um, and they'll have like similar meanings as well. And so these these birds, these two types of birds, ravens and clo crows, uh, the similarities are they're 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 black, um, typically all black. Although there are some, are some species of ravens and crows, crows that may have, uh, you know, some different colors. But I, uh, we're going to focus on the ones that are black. Um, they are omnivorous. Uh, often they are seem to be scavengers. Um, they are also very social, highly adapt adaptable, resourceful, and very, very intelligent. And we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Um, differences between ravens and crows. Ravens tend to be bigger. Ravens tend to hang out. They're not quite as gregarious as crows. Crows will hang out in like pretty big flocks or families. Uh, ravens are more often seen in either singly or in pairs and you can hear the difference between them. Crows tend to have a, a clear caw while, whereas ravens have more of a kind of a almost bell-like croak. It's a croaking sound. Um, so there's there's a definite difference in the sound. I have noticed that um, the crows tend to be very adaptable to urban environments. Although ravens will sometimes be seen in cities, at least around where I'm at, there's a lot of crows in the city or in the towns, um, but I don't typically see a lot of ravens unless I go out in the woods. Um, they, the, I, I see more ravens in the woods and crows in town. Um, so I don't know if that is a universal thing or not, but uh, just something that I've noticed. Um, maybe the crows are more likely to um, take advantage of city life, you know, the garbage or whatever. Um, many cultures and throughout history have seen both ravens and crows as birds of ill omen. And this is doubtless due to the fact that they do eat carrion. They are scavengers and that they would hang out on battlefields. And they're they're really smart, as we'll you know as we'll see later. So it's quite possible that they may have learned to recognize 
when people were preparing for battle and it may actually have gotten them excited so that might be part of why people there's a certain mistrust that kind of surrounds the whole mystique of raven and crow and this is reflected in the names that people have given to groups of these birds a group of crows is often referred to as a murder of crows Groups of ravens uh, have been called variously an unkindness of ravens, a conspiracy of ravens, a treachery of ravens. So you can really see the, you know, the, the social um, beliefs that people have about these birds really is reflected in the names that we have for, for the plural of these animals. Um, and it's true that they do, they, they, they can be, you know, they, they will eat almost anything and they will go after animals. Um, they will hunt and, you know, often they'll dispatch a, a weaker or sickly animal, you know, pretty easily. Um, so you can see them as, it's easy to see them as just kind of murderous things. Um, but as we'll see, that they've got another side as well. So let's talk about some of the positive attributes of ravens and crows. And we're just going to start with their very high intelligence. Like all corvids, ravens and crows are extremely sp smart. And uh, perhaps the ravens and, and crows, you know, the smartest of all, the corvids, um, they are believed to be on a par with the great apes and the dolphins and whales, the cetaceans. Um, so, so very, very high intelligence. And we're going to tell you some of the things that I found out as I was researching ravens and crows um, that are, are just astounding. Um, first of all, they can solve all sorts of puzzles. They can understand basic physics, things like water displacement. Um, so researchers have set up all sorts of tests for them to figure out, you know, kind of um, figure things out and they they are really really good at just finding solutions to problems they're really good problem solvers so problem solving you know intelligence high intelligence craftiness um, cleverness any of these this is part of this uh, spiritual meaning of of these birds uh, researchers believe that they have the ability to plan for the future, that they can understand cause and effect. Some have even solved puzzles that baffled even chimpanzees and human children. Um, so, so ravens and crows are, are really, really up there. Um, they also have the ability to adapt to new conditions by developing behaviors that are not even seen in the wild when they're presented with unusual kind of artificial situations and research. Um, so this is, especially as we go into, as we're moving into a new phase of consciousness on the planet, um, or even a crow, uh, I'm kind of feeling our, our hanging out with us here as, as spirit animals um, can be very helpful here in helping to, helping to adapt, helping to adapt to a changing world. Um, so if you've had a lot of contact with raven and crow, this may be why, because we are, you know, our, our world is changing in ways that, um, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's unprecedented change that we're going through. Um, so this can be a very, very good spirit animal right now at this time. Um, they have amazing memories. So if you're kind to a crow, they're going to remember it. So they remember people who are kind to them. But be careful because they'll also remember it if you're mean to them and they will harass you for it. Okay. And they'll, they'll, they can pick out not just, not just that it's a human being that was mean, but they can pick out specific individual human beings. Okay. And what's more, they're going to tell your friends about you too, whether you've been kind to them or not. Right. So they seem to be able to communicate specific information with each other and, and they're very socially adept. Um, so really this is about, um, you know, discerning the truth and, and communicating it, right? So, so they, they are very, very bright and very observant. So awareness is another one, another, um, meaning that I can see in, in Crow and Raven. Um, 
awareness and also social kind of keeping social checks and balances. Um, you know, having that 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 social justice aspect. They they are very aware of justice. These these animals, these birds, um, and this is not just you know between them and humans but with each other there they've done um, researchers have done studies that's indicated that uh, crows or ravens understand when another bird is trying to pull one over on them and they will choose to um, just to maybe avoid or they will sometimes exhibit shunning behavior and kind of behaviors that indicate that there's some sort of social law that that takes place within a flock of, of ravens or crows within their society. So, you know, truth, justice, law, I'm seeing as definitely an aspect of this spirit animal. Um, they communicate very well with each other. They've been shown to, they've been observed to use gestures with each other, such as pointing with their bills, or they show objects to each other. So communication is another aspect that comes forward. Um, they, they seem to be self-aware. So again, this awareness, and um, they, they have, they, they do show empathy as well. So even though, you know, there's that whole idea of a murder of crows or that murderous aspect, but they, they do have, a, they are capable of, a, of deep empathy with each other. Crows have actually been observed to hold funerals, so loudly cawing and gathering around their dead flock mates, um, you know, so that they're aware of life and death. And, and they seem to be very moved and even disturbed by it. Um, they do have trickster elements that in, in many cultures they are seen, crows or ravens, as, as a trickster animal. And they have actually been observed to trick other animals, like distracting an animal and, and, and working in teams to do this so that maybe one or two birds distract the animal and the others go sweep down to get their food. Um, they have also been observed to, um, kind of call the attention of bigger predators to a carcass that they they couldn't like sometimes it's not as so easy for them to open a carcass right because they don't have the the big teeth and, and claws that something like a wolf or a cougar or something might have but they've been seen to sort of tell or show or call the attention of something like a wolf to a dead animal so that the, car, the, the predator will do the, the, the hard work of ripping open the carcass, and then when the predator's done, the ravens and crows can go down and get it. So very, very smart and able to manipulate the, their own environment. Um, so this is a manifestation animal, okay? The ability to think ahead, they, they've been seen to kind of be able to plan ahead, or the ability to, to kind of see opportunities and then cause things to happen for the, that opportunity to uh, to actually pan out. Um, okay, so the, the highly intelligent, they are also really, really playful. And this, this may actually go along with high intelligence, okay? Because we see this in dolphins too. We see this in monkeys, this playfulness aspect. Um, if you've ever observed like I was out in the woods the other day and observing ravens and it was a really windy day and I noticed them just playing in the wind they'd kind of close their wings and fall and then open their wings again and, and get buffeted back up and it looked like they were just having a great time this is not behavior that I've ever seen like a raptor do but the crows were just like almost somersaulting the wind and and they have been observed to do somersaults or even fly upside down that kind of thing um, so they, they really um, if raven or crow is coming forward 
of feeling too. Are you being asked to enjoy life a little bit more? Because they've got both these aspects, okay? They've got this aspect of, you know, kind of heaviness or, or depth, but they've also got this playful behavior. So it's sometimes this might be an invitation to rise above, rise above the, you know, whatever depression you may be feeling and, and, and play. Sometimes the reason we're feeling depressed is because we haven't allowed ourselves to play, to get out there and actually dance, move your body in a playful way can actually help to pull ourselves out of, you know, some of these denser emotions. Um, okay, so another very universally accepted meaning of crow and raven is that they are seen to symbolize magic, the magical realm, um, intuition, the other world. There's a connection with the other world. They're often seen as a messenger between worlds. Okay, and um, this makes sense. This is this is something that I see in symbolism that comes up a lot with scavenger animals because they are consuming the dead, right? And in so doing and consuming the dead, they're bringing that that whatever it is from the dead back into the world. So there's that messenger aspect, that that idea of the communication between the worlds, or going from one to the other and back. Um, which makes them a very magical, and it also adds to both their mystique and this uh, fear that surrounds this animal, right? Sometimes with the fear of death that's coming forward. Um, so I would encourage you to kind of, um, you know, if this, if this animal is coming forward, you know, explore the idea of, you know, is it death or is it just pointing that there's, there's something beyond death? Okay, that, that there's life beyond death, that there's consciousness beyond death, and that these animals are asking us to look beyond just the, the, the body or the physical death to see that there's something more there, that there's an aspect of individuals, even when they pass, that transcends the physical, that, that you know, it is, is, is always there. Um, Speaking the truth is another one. Um, they, they show us things that aren't necessarily, sometimes things that we don't want to see, right? Um, so there's, there's so many aspects to Raven and Crow that you kind of have to look at this bird and see all the aspects, right? To to see that it's got all these positive attributes, it's also got the more ones that are perceived as negative, and that we have to kind of look at, at everything that's going on, okay? So just not hiding things, but just accepting that life has both dark and light to it. Um, the, the, the eating of carrying, getting down to the bones of things, right? Speaking the truth. And also their loud, clear caws, their big, loud croaks, they reveal what's going on. Um, if there's something, if there's a predator in the area, sometimes a flock of crows will, will actually reveal that. They will shout it out. Um, you maybe have seen them mobbing um, <laughs> mobbing raptors, right? They're, they're kind of, they, they show what's there. Uh, um, all right. So I, I actually see ravens and crows as the closest birds to humans because we, they, they're reflecting all the aspects of humanity back to us. Okay, and it's sort of ironic that they're a black bird, but but I almost see them as a mirror bird. In, in fact, they are thought to be attracted to to mirrors or or to shiny objects. Um, and in that regard, you know, that's another attribute of humans just being sort of like wanting to collect things. Um, so 
they, they, they reflect both positive and negative aspects of us as humans. Maybe that's why people have such strong feelings for them, right? People tend to either love them or hate them. And maybe because they're, they, they, they're really close to us. They're really close to home. So whatever, you know, they, they, they are likely to kind of show us the truth about who we are and make us come face to face with that, which isn't always comfortable. So they can take us out of our comfort zone. And as far as, um, you know, I'm actually seeing crows as almost more like the adolescent version of, um, they really remind me of groups of teenagers in, in good ways and bad ways, right? Good or bad or whatever, you know, positive, negative. Um, I'm seeing ravens a little bit more mature, and this is me anthropomorphizing. <laughs> That's just the, kind of the way I see it. But the the groups of crows do gang up, just sort of like teenagers hang out in gangs, right? And sometimes this is bullying behavior, right? Sometimes you see gangs of crows kind of beating, you know, bullying. You say bullying, but they they'll prey on kind of the helpless animals but they also have anti-bully behavior you know they'll go after the raptors and so forth and as stated before they they are actually very empathic with each other so um this is sort of like both both positive and negative aspects of this tendency to have tribes or to um you know gang up in families right that that can manifest in very very positive ways it can also manifest in negative ways so if crow and raisin or raven are coming forward for you look at like how you and your your community or your connections are relating is there tension there or are you actually supporting each other and how can we expand so that Maybe all of humanity belongs to our tribe, right? So that we expand that empathy. Um, so basically, Raven and Crow really ask us to accept all of ourselves, to acknowledge both dark and light so that it's brought up in truth. Because if we are able to see both dark and light aspects of ourselves, then we can start to fully integrate. So, you know, so Raven and Crow can really stand for the shadow aspect of ourselves, right? But when we bring those to light, and that's what they are good at doing, they're good at bringing things to light, right? Remember, they're good at being messengers. Um, so they can show us, they can show us the, our own weaknesses, they can show us our shadow aspect. And that is so important for achieving autonomy, for achieving sovereignty, for knowing oneself so that one can move forward and be able to choose proactively, choose proactively, you know, those things, those parts of us that are more positive, that we can start maybe living from that aspect of ourselves and, you know, recognizing the dark aspects, but not necessarily being controlled by them, right? Okay, so I hope that you have enjoyed uh, this video. If you feel like it's helped you, I would love to hear about it. Put your comments below and also additional insights that you may have about Raven or Crow. I um, would like to love to hear that posted below because if it's not something that came up here in this video and you think it's important, somebody else is going to get um, benefit out of that too. So please do post that. And if you would like to receive uh, more of these videos, I post about spirited animals a lot. I do a lot of spirit animal readings, you know, for, for the lunar uh, new moons, full moons, and so forth, as well as artwork and spirit animal artwork. I'm going to leave links below to those things. I do appreciate your likes, and if you'd like to receive notification of new videos, be sure to hit the bell when you hit the, the, the little like button. So thanks so much for watching. Much love, and we'll catch you again later. Do I just hope that you enjoy Raven and Crow, and, and one final word, really trust your intuition, because 
This is a lot of information, but some of these pieces of information are going to jump out at you a little bit more with your particular relationship with the Raven and Crow. So after you've had time to listen to this, maybe listen to it again once or twice, and then feel in, start asking Raven and Crow, you know, what is it that you're here to tell me? And you may get the answer right away, or you may have to kind of listen for it, or maybe journal with it, or meditate with this animal. But I, uh, you know, just rest assured, if you've been drawn to this video, and if you've stuck through it, there is something here. They've got a message for you, um, and, and they can really help you on your journey. So much love, many blessings, and we'll catch you again soon. Thank you.